Hey guys, like a lot of you, I've also been playing a ton of hardcore over the last couple of weeks and there is more shaman stuff coming, hopefully I'll get some more TOGC footage this week, but today we're gonna have a look at how to get the most out of your warlock while staying alive in hardcore classic. And in my opinion, warlock is probably the perfect class if you're thinking about giving hardcore a try or if you're just a bit sick of the risky RNG playstyle of certain other classes. With life tap essentially combining your health and mana pool, um, warlocks get access to a level of resource management pretty much any other class can only dream about. Then we'll add the resources of your Void Walk into the equation and there's pretty much an infinite potential of like optimizing rotation and resource consumption. So that's pretty cool. I reckon, yeah, between the tankiness of your Void Walker and probably the strongest open world CC fear, I don't think you'll have any problems with any elite quests or bigger groups of mobs. And if that wasn't enough, your level 40 mount is free as well, so pretty good deal. There are some negatives though. You pretty much don't have any interruptibility and your lack of mobility or disengage options can and will leave you vulnerable in sticky situations sometimes. Sounds pretty bad at first, but um, that's actually where we get to our next point, professions. While with the fluent nature of your resources, alchemy isn't a bad choice and lets you kind of double dip in health and mana elixirs. Um, since you got your health stone, you'll very rarely use any potions, so I recommend going engineering instead. Grenades are a perfect substitute for the missing interruptibility and target dummies will help you get out of dangerous situations. Also, you get some stylish goggles to wear, so... Nice. Yes, you'll need to source yourself some leather to level engineering, but compared to most other classes, you'll be able to shred through multiple enemy packs to get to those sweet, sweet chests with ease. In the open world, we'll run Void Walker like pretty much all the time. Yeah, there are other pets um, that do more damage and bring different abilities, such as Kick, but in my opinion, between the cruisy Void Walker playstyle and the oh shit sacrifice button, the choice really isn't that hard. I would recommend binding the pet attack and follow commands on something easy like your mouse wheel and adding an additional mouse over attack command to keep those chain pulls going. You probably also want to be able to toggle torment on and off to be able to maximize your Void Walker's mana pool, which more often than not will be your bottleneck actually. So you can usually toggle it off after the first two casts, since the mob will be lowish by then and you will send your Void Walker to the next enemy anyways. Um, I'll put a macro for that in the description under the video. Chuck us a like while you're there, much appreciated. And once your Void Walker is on low health and out of mana, it'll be faster to just sack him and resummon. Next up, sounds pretty logical, but I still have to stress it. Um, keep your max distance while fighting a mob. This is mainly for two reasons. First off, with the way threat works. Um, this way you will need to build up 125% threat instead of just 100. So those additional 25% threat can make quite a difference. And secondly, you obviously want the highest possible runtime of your dots before the enemy can actually hit you. Our general rotation will be Curse of Agony, into Corruption, into a Immolate cast, into, depending on your enemy health pool, probably just one, maybe a Shadow Bolt, maybe even Life Drain. You kind of want to get a good feeling of how much damage your dots do, um, so you can kind of sync it up with the enemy health pool, so like your last couple of ticks of Curse of Agony will kill the mob just to yeah, be the most mana and time efficient possible. All right, next up we got Talons. I'm gonna try to make that fairly quick. Um, we probably wanna get, start off with the first five points into Improved Corruption, into three points Demonic Embrace, two points Healthstone. After that, we'll buff our Void Walker, go back into Demonic Embrace, 
Now we get Fell Domination, um, pretty big cooldown, every 15 minutes we can summon our Void Walker almost instantaneously and almost mana free. So essentially gives us two sacrifices to play with at all times. Um, after that we'll buff the health of our Void Walker, we'll improve the um, summoning further, Keep the um, we'll put the cast time and the mana cost down. Now we pretty much got the option between damage of our Void Walker and more maximum mana of our Void Walker. I'll go with the mana just so we maybe squeeze out an additional two torments out of that mana pool, which would be pretty big. And um, now we can go into the uh, Void Walker damage, into Demonic Sacrifice one point here, and we got Soul Link. Um, some people prefer picking Soul Link up at 40 straight away, so you kind of need to respect, take the points out of Corruption, um, go down to Soul Link, and then you can go back into Corruption, but that's kind of a personal preference, I reckon. After those um, 30 point talents, there is uh, nothing more really interesting in Demonology, so we're probably gonna put the rest of the points somewhere in Affliction. Last up, I just want to talk about some useful tech we have available as a Warlock. Um, firstly would be something called Split Pulling, and what it does is it essentially allows you to single out one enemy out of a group of bigger mobs you pull. Um, as you see here, if you single target the mob, the whole group will pull, and as you keep single targeting the same mob, the whole group will keep running with that mob. This is because if you pull it this way, they all share the same leash. So once you reset um, the first mob, they all reset together, but you can't reset them separately. So what Split Pulling allows you is, essentially you start off with an AoE attack on all the mobs, and that triggers a separate leash for all of them. So now you can run out, um, single target just one mob, and that one will keep running behind you while the other mobs reset. So pretty handy for like bigger packs of mobs. Next up is something called fear juggling. And there are essentially two ways to do it, um, single target and multi-target. With single target, it essentially just refers to the fact that your curse of recklessness interrupts the fear effect, so it stops it from working. So what you can do is you can dot up the enemy, fear him, and once he runs too far away from you, you can use Curse of Recklessness, stop the fear, enemy runs back, you cast Curse of Agony again, and the fear continues. So that's pretty handy for like mob dense areas, maybe like with humanoids or murlocs that pull each other, so you can kind of control where the enemy is uh, running to. Um, also to keep in mind here, the run speed that uh, enemies have while they're feared depends on their mob type. So beasts, for example, or murlocs are really fast and they run yeah, really far as well, so just keep that in mind. You can also juggle multiple enemies, so essentially you just pull the first one, dot dot dot, the enemy runs towards you, you fear him away, and you pull the second one, dot dot dot, once the enemy runs towards you, you fear that one away, and now the first target will run back to you, because that fear is um, cancelled. So once that first target is almost back to you, you just fear him again. Second target will run back to you because that fear is cancelled now and you fear that one again. So you can essentially juggle multiple enemies um, like that. Easy peasy. And that's pretty much it for today. Um, I hope you guys learned something. If you got any additional tips I forgot to mention, please chuck it in the comments and catch you at the next one. Cheers guys.